It's been almost two years since I dove into building my first Voron 3D printer. This was a V0.1 that had just been released, so all the parts were self-sourced. I chose the V0 specifically because I felt like it was a great entry point into Voron. I was interested in Clipper, had limited experience up until that point with Core XY 3D printers, and we were in a small condo, so the footprint was perfect. Fast forward to last month, and I finished building my third V0, with this one being the Cyborg V0.2 kit. Although the scale of this printer can prove challenging, especially during the assembly process, it is an incredibly rewarding build, and I love this little printer. In today's video, we will look at how the V0 has evolved since my first build, why this is a great time to build one, and take a look at the Cyborg V0.2 kit. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by NordPass for Business. As someone who primarily works online, I've been looking for a method to secure my accounts, passwords, and card info across different devices. Enter NordPass, an all-in-one password and credential manager. Available as a computer or phone app and web vault, creating, storing, and syncing your information securely has never been easier. In addition, NordPass includes data breach detection, auto-lock safeguards, and password health metrics. NordPass for Business takes us a step further by allowing you to share logins and sensitive data with colleagues. With just a few clicks, you can grant or revoke permissions. You also have full transparency with event logs and notifications for unusual activity. Use the link in the description to see NordPass in action, and be sure to use code ModBotBusiness for your three-month free trial. Let's start by touching on the changes that have been made to the printer since my original build. As mentioned, my first V0 was the V0.1. This was a really nice update that included swapping from Bowden to Direct Drive with the mini afterburner toolhead and a more compact Z-axis thanks to an integrated lead screw. Overall, I really enjoyed the V0.1 and even ended up building a second one three months after I completed my first. However, I did have a few nitpicks, with the first being related to the top hat. The stock top hat either floats on top of its mounting points or it can be secured with M3 screws. Personally, I like having more open access to the inside of the printer, and it was a bit too closed off for me. I did install a utility belt mod on my first V0.1 that did correct this, but it also added a bit of height to the printer. The second is with the mini afterburner toolhead. Functionally, I quite like the toolhead, and it's given me great performance, but on my first V0 build, I had some issues that required me to disassemble it four or five times to adjust things inside of it. The mini afterburner toolhead is just not fun to work on. From the removal process to getting inside of it, I found it pretty tedious. Well, I must not have been feeling alone in this because January of this year, a new updated version of the V0 was released, the V0.2, and with it came some awesome upgrades. Not only does the V0.2 look amazing and feature completely redone skirts and have cleaner wiring thanks to it using sensorless XY homing, but both the top hat and the tool head were completely revised. The top hat went from a printed frame with angled acrylic panels to an extrusion frame with rectangular panels and built-in hinges. I am super happy with the revised design and it makes it where if you need to work on something inside of here or if you just want to open it up to keep it open or if you're printing a lot with PLA, it is a piece of cake. Then there's the new mini stealth printer tool head which I feel is just an all-around better design. Getting into the tool head is easier, there's better cooling, and the hot end inserts make swapping hot ends super simple. These things along with other quality of life improvements make the V0.2 an awesome revision. V0.2 R1 was actually just released a couple of weeks ago with some additional updates that I'll have linked in the description below if you want to take a peek at the changelog. On top of the official changes, there are a ton of new and improved mods available. From different tool heads with better part cooling, to beefy static cooling fans, and even carbon fiber beams for lighter weight, the options are almost limitless. Voron has also grown immensely in popularity, which has greatly expanded its community. My first V0 was serial number 801, my second was 1720, and it looks like when I get my most recent build serialized, it will be around 3000. A larger community means that there is much more information available, and this comes in the form of videos, upgrades and mods, articles, and just people willing to help you out if you're getting stuck or have questions along the way. 
With the growth in popularity, there are also more build options available than ever before, and this comes both in the form of going the self-source route or going with a kit option. Cyborg contacted me a few months ago asking if I was interested in building their V0.2 kit and sharing my experience. Looking at the product page for the kit, I was pretty shocked by the price tag of $469, which is roughly half of what I paid when I self-sourced and much less than many of the other kits out there. On top of that, they managed to include all of the printed parts for the entire build at that price. This is something I don't believe I've seen offered by any other kits, at least not without an added cost. One of the pain points I saw two years ago and I still see today for anyone wanting to build a Voron is the ABS parts. Either people just don't feel comfortable printing with ABS or they don't want to go through the hassle of it. Yes, Voron does have the Print It Forward program and there is the commercial Print It Forward program as well, but there's no denying the value of having the printed parts ship in the kit at no added cost to you. This at least lets you get the printer up and running and then you can decide if you want to swap out colors or certain aspects of the printed parts. I was curious to see what the kit was like, especially compared to the builds I'd already done, and I agreed. For anyone interested, the entire build experience and build process, with the exception of the wiring, was done on live stream over on the ModBot Army channel, so I will have that linked in the description below. We are going to be building a Trident, the Cyborg Trident, pretty soon here, so if you're not subscribed and you're interested, definitely do so. Overall, the build was a very positive experience. Everything was packaged really nicely in multiple layers of foam, and all of the printed parts looked great, which was something that I initially had some concern with. We inspected every piece, including the larger pieces, and I had zero warping or any issues with delamination. The only printed part I ended up swapping out was the standoffs for the stepper motor. I ended up breaking that when tightening it, so I just ordered some aluminum replacement ones. The kit is also now shipping with metal standoffs instead of printed ones. The only nitpick I had during the build was the PCB style standoffs used in place of nuts for the linear rails. The pro of using them is that it's easier than trying to align nuts with a printed alignment jig, but they required a bit of sanding, and since you are creating the thread when you install the screws, I managed to strip one of the holes even though I thought that I was being very careful. It wasn't a huge deal, and I just ended up using M3 nuts instead of those PCB boards for the X-axis rail. The rest of the build was smooth sailing, and I really liked the included Gemini V3 board. It was my first time using it and it acts both as your controller as well as your clipper host so you don't need a separate Pi. This also came pre-flashed with clipper and it may seem like a small detail but I really liked the inclusion of a printed wiring diagram. Yes, I'm almost always building near one or multiple computers, but just having the wiring diagram on a physical piece of paper that I could have sitting on the printer when I'm behind it working on the electronics was something that I actually really enjoyed. There was also a config file installed, but it did require a fair bit of tweaking to get it working reliably. So what's performance been like with the build? Well, initially after building it and getting it printing very briefly, I ran into some issues with under extrusion or just extrusion inconsistencies. A few others that I know that purchased this kit right around the time that I got mine had mentioned some issues with various fans in the tool head as well as the hot end. So I did know that going into this, but I wanted to see for myself just how it all worked together. On paper, the included hot end looks great. It's got a V6 style heatsink with a ceramic heater core and a hardened steel nozzle. So I really wanted to use it. When I had the under extrusion, I believed it was either heat creep or just the hot end having issues. So I swapped out the hot end for the Drop Effect XG, but the issues continued. After a bit more troubleshooting, I ended up narrowing it down to the included large extruder gear. It wasn't obvious at the time of building, but when I compared it to some of the other gears that I had, I saw right away that the geometry was just not correct. One side of the large gear had too wide of a standoff, which caused it to rub against the printed housing. I swapped out this gear for another one that I had and all of the extrusion issues went away. I then printed for a couple of weeks running various flow tests and different prints before the thermistor in that hot end failed on me. On top of this, one of the fans had begun making a pretty loud sound when it revved up. So I swapped all the toolhead fans out for GDS time and thanks to Hart K releasing a hot end mount for the X1 Carbon hot end, I threw in an extra that I had laying around. I love my Bamboo Lab 3D printers and I've had great luck this past year using their high flow sort of all in one hot ends. For $35, it's hard to argue with the value of them. It's performed great and I've printed for at least another 15 or so hours with it installed in the V0.2. One pretty unique element of the Cyborg team is that they're actively taking in feedback and they're implementing it very quickly. 
Throughout my build, if I had an issue and I mentioned it to the team, they looked into it and were quick to update all kits moving forward to make sure that nobody else was having those same issues. The PCB standoffs have been replaced with metal ones, the extruder gear is now a Fisec palm gear, and they're revising the hot end, specifically its electronics, which seems to be where the primary issues lie. They sent me a list of all the changes that have been made since I received my kit, and there was over 10, I think, on that list. Some of them were kind of minor, things like including a plug, so that way you plug both of the hot end wires the cooling wires into it and it turns it into one plug so you don't have to do the splicing yourself to including LEDs with all of the kits. This might not sound like a big deal but I can tell you right now that I often provide either in my final video or via email lots of feedback to the manufacturers based off of my time with any product and most of the time nothing happens with that. Don't get me wrong there are times where a change is made and I'm always super happy that my feedback was able to make a difference but usually I get a thank you and then nothing ever happens. This certainly doesn't give Cyborg a pass because I think that a lot of these things could have been caught with more initial testing, but I do have to at least give them some credit. They genuinely seem to want to make the best budget kit option available and they don't have an issue admitting fault. From the few that I know that have personally purchased these machines after I started building mine, they've been able to verify some of the changes, as well as confirm that Cyborg has been really quick to ship out parts when needed. Even with the toolhead issues, the price is an incredible value. My fans and hot end upgrade were roughly $50, and I'm supposed to be getting the revised hot end in, which I'm optimistic will fix the thermistor errors that I had on mine. For someone that's looking to buy a kit with all of the bells and whistles already included, like a Kirigami bed or a big clipper screen, this might not be the kit for you. But for someone who's wanting to build a V0.2 on a tighter budget, doesn't want to deal with ABS printing, or if you're someone that already plans to mod the heck out of the printer so swapping some parts is going to happen regardless of the kit, the Cyborg V0.2 is a serious contender. And that has been the V0.2 and my thoughts on why today is an awesome time to build one and my review of the Cyborg V0.2 kit. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any others, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you do have any questions that are specific to Cyborg, I will also have a link in the description down to their Discord where you can talk with either staff or other people that have built these kits and they can give you some additional firsthand experience. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.